Hey y'all, what's up? You're G here. We are back. We are back. We are back for another episode of Love and Marriage Huntsville. Uh, sometimes Love and Hip Hop Huntsville. <laughs> um, but yeah, y'all, um, this episode, y'all, I'm not gonna lie. The more we get into this season, the more I'm just starting to get like a little burning knot in my stomach for Maurice. Like, he's really pissing me off. Like, and it's tr it's kind of triggering. Like, he's triggering me and it's like, mm, my discernment about the type of man that Maurice is, it's just, you stop brothers. Like, y'all are something else. Y'all are the same man in a different body, just a different package. Y'all do the same thing, just in different ways. And it's like, Maurice, you was flying under the, you was flying under the radar. You really were because he was all focused on Martel. Then Maurice, my, you know, then Marceau. But like Maurice, this is your season. It's starting to look like this is your season. And, and I, ooh, we gonna talk about it. We just we we just gonna talk about it, y'all. Um, but yeah, um, love and marriage on Y'all tell me how you feel about this season. Um, there is a love and marriage Detroit I see coming, uh, so we're gonna be interested to see how that turns out, but let's go ahead and get into this episode, you guys. If you're new to my channel, I appreciate you for tuning in. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, because it ain't gonna kill you. It's free 99 and y'all know what to do. Drop down in the comments, let me know if you stop by, hit that thumbs up button, and let's get into it. So we open up the episode with Melody. Melody is, y'all know, Melody's gonna be showing everybody, you know, always she's booked and busy, how she's booked and busy, what she's always doing, what she's up to, and, you know, she basically handles, uh, I guess she teaches master classes or whatever about handling foreclosure properties and, you know, bidding on it and so forth, and so, you know, she's basically showing that's what she does, Kimmy pops up, and Kimmy, uh, she introduces her to a man, I guess, that she could be in connection with working-wise. And Mel's gonna let it be known, bitch, I'm gonna get you in contact with who you need to get in contact with, okay? Like, Mel, I'm the I'm the middleman. And I think it's just Melly, like, yes, can it be, like, you know, so much sometimes? Can it just be, like, over, like, just just doing too much? Yes. But what we, what we gotta respect about it, though, is... Like, Melody is out there hustling. Like, we can say that. Like, she out there hustling and she's showing women otherwise who think that, like, they're not going to be able to make it. Their life is over that. No, you can really push through. Like, see where Melody is at. Y'all see where Melody is at and then look where Martel is at. I mean, I ain't trying to say nothing. All I'm trying to say is, you know, she's out here and she's making it. Because when God said go... God said go, okay? And now she out here going and ain't looked back. But nonetheless, she's talking to Kimmy and, you know, makes that connection with old dude and then just starts talking about Kimmy's, you know, talking about getting back into, you know, the work for worse, you know. She's just ready to get back kind of just into doing her natural rhythm. Um, um, then she brings up, you know, for the most part of her life, and, you know, that's where Kimmy's, you know, work is kind of like her distraction. She's like, for the most part, you know, I pick and choose what parties I go to, where my energy, you know, I dispel my energy to, you know, and then, you know, I'm trying to make sure the energy around me is great. It's just the one thing, you know, the main thing for me is like really at home, you know, I'm dealing with, you know, basically two nucleus that don't want to pick up behind themselves and basically view me as they're made and like that's really the problem and it's starting to rub off on maurice jr monster and I, I, it's hard to watch it really is hard to watch this clearly is something that is just just tap dancing on kimmy's last nerve and i'm sure it's kind of like i'm going through cancer i'm doing chemo radiation and it's not to be like pulling the cancer car, but bitch, I'm gonna pull the cancer car. I got cancer. I should be having to pick up shit. Like, dang, I, what? <laughs> Are you kidding me? And then when you got your son over here not cleaning up behind himself and I ask him to do it, and I'm coming and I'm looking at you with the dad like, so you gonna say something and all you can do is look at me like, that's a problem. Maurice, like, I really, ooh, I'm gonna get into your ass later. Um, so yeah, no, um, Kimmy, she basically is explaining that to, to Mel and she, you know, she's like, well, Kimmy, I'm always going to be here for you. You know, I like, y'all know, just showing love to each other. And she's like, Kimmy, Kimmy, Kimmy do look cute. And she does not look like what she's going through. 
Um, and it's just like she keep pushing the only problem of her life right now is that bald-headed Carmen Macchiato looking ass nigga that she's with. Like, it is just, I can't with him right now. I can't. I don't know how Kimmy married this man. Like, I cannot. Uh, move on. So, Stormy, Tiffany, they meet up basically to discuss the party and whatnot. Tiffany's a little confused because she's like, I don't know why Stormy got involved in this mess with me and Kiki. And then the male whole situation, like, what's up? So, they go have a little, you know accoutrements and uh start talking about the party and she's like you know stormy like what was you you was getting involved with kiki and everything you know i'm kind of confused because me and kiki were good after mel you know pulled us to the side of her house you know like everything's good but now you know she's coming to me talking about you know a problem and now it's like oh my god we gotta rehash it and stormy's like well you know at the end of the day, like, you really not good until you really throw everything on the table. You know, y'all didn't really have everything on the table. And Tiffany was like, well, yeah, what if everything was on the table? And she was like, well, not really because you didn't know about the text. And Tiffany was like, well, damn. I was like, yeah, I didn't know about the text. But, like, yeah, it was it, – the text message wasn't really something that needed to be brought up. But clearly, as from uh, we see later in the episode, Kiki was going to bring it up. Basically, she was just waiting for it in her back pocket and Tisha ruined it basically for her. Um – um, but yeah, so, um, uh, uh, Stormy basically was like, y'all gotta put everything out on the table, like, then you can really move on. Uh, so then Tiffany asked, uh, Stormy about Mel and how she feels about it. She felt like the tea party really was a, a, a controlled or manipulated, like, you know, setup. And, you know, she basically, like, she basically don't have no feelings about Mel is what kind of what she's feeling at this point. She's just glad her mama got to get off her chest what she wanted to say, which is kind of, like, almost feeling like, okay, do you kind of low-key feel that way? Like, and then you're just kind of using your mama, like, as an excuse. Like, are you pulling the t-shirt and mama wanted the situation, Stormy? Um, but then, um, you know, Tiffany starts talking about uh, what she was um, talking about at the party. You know, because Stormy's like, I saw you and Sheree talking, you know, what, what's up? And she was like, yeah, you know, I was just talking to her, you know, um, uh, you know, because she's new to the group and just trying to get it acquainted, like, and so she's like, I'm just asking, like, okay, you know, what's like being with Martel, you know, he's a cheater, you know, still having feelings with Mel, you know, she basically gave a rundown, and Stormy was like, you said all that? And she was like, yeah, girl. she's like, girl, you know I'm nosy, and she was like, but you don't even know the girl, like, Yes, like when you don't know anybody, you really don't be asking the questions that Tiffany was asking Sheree. But at the end of the day, you got to make a show, okay? And Tiffany's doing what need to be doing what need to be done this season because she is asking the questions that we want to know. Like we not let's we not go tap dance around it no more because what this cast really does tap dance around stuff. So Tiffany's getting right, cutting straight to the point, like point blank period, and I am here for it. So, yeah, I'm going to ask her, how you feel about being with this cheating ass? Because, girl, did you not see his last relationship? Okay, so you hanging out with the kids. Have you not hung out with Mel? And so she's telling Stormy all this. And she's like, well, you talking to, you know, Sheree about Mel. I mean, well, did, or did you talk to Mel about Sheree? Hello. Really? Um, Tiffany was saying, well, did you talk to Sheree? No, did you talk to Mel about Sheree? And she was like, no, Sheree's never come up in conversation. And so Stormy's like, well, that's kind of weird. So you might want to address that. Like Mel, you know, if you go be friends with Mel, like bringing up Sheree, like why would you not bring it up? But is Tiffany right in the sense of like, okay, Sheree's been around this man's kids. Typically you're not around somebody's kids unless you've met the mom and so that's why she asked stormy like how would you feel like would you you know let your kids be around a woman that you haven't met and she was like well you know firstly like is it a woman that's gonna be like for good because if not like i wouldn't even expect him to introduce a woman that to the kids that you're not serious about because that's what you should do like you shouldn't be introducing your kids to anybody that you're not serious about like if y'all just cool in situationship like and just messing around with each other and are just you know a companion for the moment then that's not somebody you introduce your kids to now if like i'm dating intentionally and i'm looking to marry this woman then that's when you introduce your kids and so 
you know, that's Stormy was right. Like, I wouldn't expect him not to introduce somebody unless she was for real anyways. And so Tiffany's like, well, does that mean Sheree is forever? And Stormy was like, I mean, she could be. Now, obviously, we all know Martell and Sheree aren't forever. So the fact that the kids did meet Sheree, like, that just goes to show you Martell's mentality. Like, you introducing your kids to women that you honestly ain't even serious about. We know this is a business arrangement. Like... It just, we know if the tables were turned and Mel introduced a dude to her kids, Martell would be up a wall, up a wall. We all know that. So this is just one of those situations where it's like Martell is just getting away and Tiffany is just being messy and we're here for it. I'm here for Tiffany being messy this season. I know it's bad, but she's asking the questions we want to know. Um, So we move on. There's a little scene with Tisha and Kiki. They're in the car. Basically, Kiki and Tisha, you know, they back to being cousins and whatnot. They are, I guess, back in the groove of things. I guess they're going to a college that they both went to. And they were like, oh, you know, remember our little apartment? You know, we had our two bed when we thought we was doing something. They are basically reminiscing on, you know, them being cousins for life. Um, and so Kiki basically asked her about, you know, or no, Stormy. Who was it, Stormy? No. Tisha asked Kiki basically about what was going on with her and Tiffany. Hello. Shh. Shh. Um, hey, cut it out. Y'all ignore Polo. He in the bag just barking. Um, Tisha brought up to Kiki basically, um, you know, why she got pulled over by Stormy. You know, it just kind of seemed like that's the situation just between you and Tiffany. And so she was like, yeah, it was. You know, Stormy, I, I don't know why she called you over. But at the end of the day, she was like, you know, I, the reason, you know, it was brought up the text message is because, you know, of how they tried to, Tiffany basically like tried to call her fake or whatever. And she's like, if I'm so fake, then you talking about Tisha, you know, sending me a text message. And she was like, yeah, you know, I didn't want to bring that out. But, you know, since you brought it up, Tisha was like, oh, sorry, my bad. So what I'm feeling like is that was some, that was something that Kiki was going to keep in her back pocket and throw it out there should her and Tiffany get into it. But Tisha just kind of like, she, she basically, she basically like popped the balloon essentially. Like it was, it was a little premature information that she threw out there. Um, and, and and kind of forced it so or no stormy kind of kind of messed that up for her the whole uh no teach who no yeah tisha tisha kind of messed that up for her polo Shh. um so yeah so you know the cousins are back in action you know they're just like i'm not gonna let nobody talk about you you know i'm not gonna let nobody talk about you you know i just know i'm gonna be there you know i'm gonna protect my cousin What's up? All right, y'all back. So basically, you know, like I said, the cousins back in action. They they to they on they back to you know bad boys for life. <laughs> we ride or die, bad boys for life for now. Because of course, you know. Oh, not to mention they also talked in the car about you know Tisha film like you know I don't know why Tiffany you know has even got me and her you know conversations. You know I'm not liking that. People keep trying to comfort you know me and Marcel in my marriage, and it's like Tisha. First of all. Stop taking that as people coming for your marriage. We're just simply, you know, picking and pointing out the, you know, the holes in the stories that we're constantly seeing with Marceau. That's all we're doing because remember, y'all are on TV, y'all are on camera. So, you know, we have the footages. <laughs> We have the footages of your husband saying one thing and his actions doing another. That's all we saying. What we're looking at between the dynamic of you and Marceau is that he runs over you, don't take you seriously, and pretty obviously don't give a damn about doing you dirty as he just kicked you out of your own motherfucking office, Miss Tisha. So all we're we're not coming for your marriage. We're just simply, you know, connecting the dots. <laughs> okay? To see what this spells out about your marriage, which is, i.e., for you, a scam. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, she's basically throwing out there, oh, you know, I don't want to, you know, have to bring up, you know, what the Huntsville streets are saying about Tiffany. And, you know, they saying that she allegedly messed with and they bleeped out the word. So we don't know who the name is. But, you know, we it is what it is. I don't think Tisha didn't want to really do it and go there because at the end of the day, if you don't talk about... The conversation is only going to, this is a tennis match, honey. So she knows if she sends it over there talking about her cheating and allegedly cheating, whoever cheating in their relationship between Big Lulu, 
um, and uh, Tiffany that it's only going to go right back to her about the, the cheatation allegations in her relationship. Like, Tisha, we really could go tit for tat and trust and believe yours is going to be far more, your face is going to be far more cracked because there's a lot more evidence, okay, on your side of the tracks. So you might want to cut it out because y'all, we know what you're doing this season of trying to keep everybody on top about discussing everything with between you and Marceau. And you don't want to go there. But it may be time after we get into Maurice's ass. Speaking of Maurice, let's go ahead and talk about that. Um, so Monster, Maurice, and Kimmy, they're in the kitchen. And, you know, talking about this, you know, quote unquote boot camp, right? This boot camp that Maurice is doing. And so she's like asking him, you know, how it is. And he's like, it's okay. Like, how long are you doing? She's like, he's like about a week. And so she's like, what is this boot camp until? He's like, well, basically, you know, waking up early. And so she's like, is that it? And he's like, yeah. Or she, she's like, what's the difference? He's like, oh, I wake up early and I work out. And she's like, that's it? And Maurice is like, no, that's not it. Like, that's not all. Like, you wake up early and, you know, then you work out. And then on the way to school, you know, we, we talk about our your future. And it's just like, at this point, Monster is taking Maurice for a joke. Like, a straight up joke. First of all, what's going on with Monster? Like, I know I'm not the only one picking up drain energy from this boy. Like, there's something going on with him. Like, it's written all over the face something's going on with monster and maurice you might not be a proponent of therapy you need it but your son might need it too like start early with mental health with boys because and we're always talking about how black men don't ever have you know outlets or people to talk to or you know their mental health isn't taken seriously like at this age is when you start because there's something clearly going on with him in my opinion but Maurice, are you really going to address it though? Are you really going to address how you know you're not really active in your sons like that, which is why you're trying to do this BS boot camp to to look like you're really, you know, doing something and fathering him actively? Like this is what this honestly is about. But Monster talks about what he's doing and, you know, oh, you know, he's like, "Oh, what you got to do in school?" And he's like, "Basically, I got to maintain a 3.0 and I want to go to, I think he said like Oklahoma or Ohio or something like that. And so Kimmy's like, you know, and all of that, I didn't hear one thing about cleaning. And Maurice's like, well, I mean, he's like, yeah, well, I mean, that's like a given. She's like, he's like, I'll do it. And she's like, yeah, that sounds good. But why don't it happen that way? Like, I can tell you to do something and it don't happen. And... Uh, she's like, your dad seems to think it's like the consequences. Like, I don't give you hard enough consequences. And monster, huh? Maurice, your son snitching on you. Your slip is showing. Because he said, no, because I, I feel like your consequences are more than his. So Maurice's like, well, if, if, that's the, if that's, you know, true, then why aren't you going ahead and doing it? And so he's like, well, it's just that because I forget. You know, I just start doing everything else. Which, he might have a little bit of ADHD, ADHD just to touch it because y'all know the, the boys and minds, they run rampant, okay? And they minds, they, they can be forgetful, but that's not an excuse. Like, you still got to, like Kimmy said, train your mind to finish one thing at a time, you know? And so, if I tell you, hey, pick up your clothes on the way downstairs, put them in, you know, the, the washer... Take your ass downstairs. You might have to go downstairs, you know, to get your backpack and get your shoes. Like, you kill it in the process. Focus on one thing, which is to put your laundry in the, in the washer. But him saying that just goes to show how much, like, Monster really kind of just, like, snitched on Maurice, like, low-key. Like, pay attention to what he's saying and what also what he's not saying, which is, oh, like, Maurice, my dad is giving me consequences. Like, they bring back the list because they tell my oh cleaning's not on there and so kimmy's like i want to see this list and so he's like oh yeah i'm sure cleaning's on there and she's like mm -hmm. so she's like just just point to the number for me and he's like is, is, is oh there, there's no number it's not on there she's like wow and you know what it don't surprise me because obviously it's up here for kimmy 
and down here for not only you, monster, but your freaking caramel, caramel head ass daddy. Like he don't like cleaning because we all know that Maurice is of the mindset women should be cleaning, but you're not teaching your son to just be lazy and not pick up after himself. Like this is what we're not doing, but also what it just goes to show is like, wow, like the lack of consideration that you're teaching your son just to not have and to not, and then not only that, but just not to have for like women. Like Kimmy is currently in the process of trying to heal from a major health incident, like cancer, bro, like chemotherapy, radi like radiation, all of that. And nowhere in that did you have a conversation with your son and be like, let's try to make this as easy on Kimmy. Like if you see something on the floor, you know, pick it up. Like if you see the kitchen, you need to be swept, just swept like those just little things like that to teach your son that the just consideration of another human being and the lack of consideration you seem to be having for your wife right now, Maurice, is just really ass. Um, so she's like, oh, wow, cleaning is not on the list. Shocker. And so he's like, well, we're going to add that to the list or whatever. And so he's like, well, maybe we need a boot camp or, you know, a new boot camp. And she's like, well, no, maybe you know, you should make it a priority. Like this, and you keep trying to make it about everything else with Maurice. The, the catalyst of this is you, point blank period. It is you, <laughs> you, there's no, no other thing, uh, all capital letters, Y-O-U, exclamation point, exclamation point. Um, so monster get to go cleaning, I guess. And so Kimmy look at Maurice like, bro, like, come on now, like, come on. Like now cleaning's not on the list. It seems to be a priority for me. And so she's just looking at him like, what, 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 what is going to be done? Like, he's like, oh, well, cause she was like, oh, well, what, are there anything about consequences? He's like, well, no, we try to focus more, you know, on being positive. So you can focus on the positive, but when he doesn't do the shit, what's the consequence? Because sometimes that's how you got to teach kids is by consequence. And the fact that you don't give him any and Maurice, admit, my little monster admitted to Maurice's consequence, uh, Kimmy's consequences being more than yours is the problem. My nigga, like Maurice is doing this fake ass daddy boot camp bullshit. And so you're sitting there having these little talks with your son on the way to school. Oh my God, what do you want to do in the future? You know, but no, it's like, how are you actually helping your son get there? What are you to teach your son through example how to get there, what to do, the type of person a human to be? Like him and his future, you play a lot, a lot into that, Maurice. Like it's just crazy. Like these scenes just really chat my ass. Like with Maurice, like he just and the way he's playing dumb about it is even more annoying because in the in the confessional, she's like, yeah, you know, um, in this situation, it just seems like, you know, what's a priority for me isn't for you. And he was like, well, no, it's not that it's not a priority. I just, you know, I just think about my mind. I just, you know, think about my, about mine first or something like that. He was like, I just, I just handle mine first or do mine more or care about mine more or something like that. And she's like the same thing. Like he plays this like dumb act and like you're playing willfully ignorant and you can tell he understands what Kimmy wants from him because at the end of the day, Kimmy gets like, she's speaking so pragmatically. Like there's no, in, there's no space for interpretation for what Kimmy is asking for. She literally told you Maurice, the problem is you. Like, and you're not listening and then you're playing dumb with what she's wanting you to do. And that's what's even more annoying because like a woman as smart as Kimmy to allow a man like this to just, just add more to her play. Like it is exhausting to watch and it just really irks me. Um, so yeah, nothing new. Maurice still ass, fake ass daddy right now, fake ass daddy role he's doing right now. I'm sorry. I just got to call it out. Like we're not just going to sit there and act like that's not what we're seeing right now. Like it just is what it is. Um, it might sound harsh, but it's the truth. <laughs> it, it is the truth. Um, and monster and the way he looked with his unkept ass hair in that scene and just the way he was looking at his energy, like, just show all of it. Like, whack. Maurice just whack. Ugh, disgust. Um, what, what else happened? 
um i think that was it before we get to this oh no tiffany big lulu uh moment on the lips is forever on the hips that go to the doctor and you know everything's good but tiffany i think you're in a little bit of a la la lens ma'am because Lewis is acting like asking questions like, okay, so how are we going to work on everything after you, you know, with you and work, you know, you're already so busy. Like, how are we going to work about that after the baby? Oh, we're going to be fine. You know, we tackle things like this. You know, we've done everything together before. You know, he's like, yeah, we have. But like, what are you going to do? You know, and she's obviously the doctor, you know, said that, you know, she might go through a little depression and, you know, trying to get pregnant and then. They ended up getting pregnant hella fast. You know, most people at her age, you know, take a little bit longer, but they they made it. <laughs> and they made it fast. And I think it kind of threw Lewis for a whip. I think he was really expecting it to take longer than what he had. Because Lewis don't want this baby. Like, I hate to say it and I hate to be so hard. Like, just so, so straight to the point about it. But this baby is for Tiffany. Like, point blank period. This baby is for Tiffany. Um, and Lewis asking her legit questions about like, okay, how are we going to handle this? And she's just sticking to the, you know, we're going to be okay. You know, I'm going to be able to breastfeed, you know, in between meetings, I'll be able to feed the baby, you know, and, and he's just looking at her like, okay. So she's like, oh, people keep trying to tell us like, oh, our schedule, we're going to slow down and, you know, we're going to have to move things around. Like, no, -uh. like we're not going to have to do that. And... You can just see the look on Lewis's on his face of how he's thinking. Like this helper is delusional. Like this absolutely is about to change. Like Tiffany, I need to get your heads out of clouds. Like you're trying to. That's the problem. That really is the problem because when people have babies, they always want to show the glitz and the glam and the you know the bows and you know the parties and you know y'all want to show that part. But really, y'all what y'all not showing is the mama stressed out in the bathroom trying to sneak a drink in and take two minutes to herself to eat on a Rice Krispies treat because she ain't ate all day and she ain't had time to herself because she's had to, you know, wipe baby butt, she's had to cook, she's had to clean, she's had to teach, you know, somebody the alphabet, you know, she's in the bathroom strung out rubbing her edges because babies and kids are hard. Like, that's the truth, and y'all always want to show, like, the, the ooh, cutesy of it all, but not really how, this, it's, it's 70, 70% 70 hardship, 30% aww, like, because this shit is hard, like, what we period, it, 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 kids are hard, and a lot more, you know, people need to show that battle, okay, Tiffany, okay, we'll see how sticking to this, oh, everything's gonna be alright, it's gonna work. Um, so yeah, we get to the end of the episode. I didn't like this. I didn't like this one iota one bit. Marcel as being there, Martel did that shit purposely because at the end of the day, he know in a conversation, his illiterate talking ass can't handle no really no key points like that. I feel like he wanted Marcel to be there to be his backup one and two to really do the talking for him. Like that's how I feel. Um, but, uh, Martel and Marceau, they're studying and Martel's like, oh, wait, you know, you keep playing that. I'm, I'm not going to passing. And it's like, y'all think Marceau want Martel to pass? Because I kind of think he don't. I know that sounds like pessimistic to say, but I think deep down, Marcel revels in Martel's demise a little bit too. I think he really do because he ain't over how a nigga pour gasoline on his household when his shit was burning up too. Like, because <laughs> that's the truth. When Martel's house was in on fire, Martel was throwing that gasoline over there towards Marceau. And, and Marceau, I, that's why he in this mess he in now because it all started with Martel and the 20 girlfriends, okay? Um, but yeah, nonetheless, that's just my thoughts. Don't jump down in the comments. Am I crazy for thinking about that, you know, that deep? But, um, Martel, yeah, you definitely need to pass. I mean, do y'all think he's gonna pass? Yes or no? Drop down in the comments. Um, but, uh, he, Tiffany comes over to talk about something. And so, you know, he starts asking her about, you know, upscale, how they thought about the party. And Marcelo is like, oh, yeah, you know, everything's good. You know, because we don't, you know, Martel doesn't get a chance to get celebrated a lot. And it's like, what is he getting celebrated for? 
<laughs> you did the you did the wine so you did the party for the wine are people getting the tracking numbers on martel like that's what we need to figure out um what is he getting celebrated for is the question uh, that is the thing um and so nonetheless you know martel and tiffany are talking back and forth and marcel like fill me in and so she's like well you know i started asking sheree you know how does she feel coming into the group like meeting mel like how does it feel to be with a cheater and Marcel was like, well, well, wait a minute. And Marcel was like, yeah, like, so he's, so he's like, first of all, cheat her. Um, he's like, are you a cheater? And she's like, no. He's like, right. So I cheated. And it's like, Marcel, nigga, you's a cheater. Like, shut up. <laughs> shut up. A person who does it for as long as you did, nigga, you're a cheater. Like, shut up. Like, a person who doesn't want to learn their lesson that's when they get to be the oh you know i've cheated before martel you're a cheater <laughs> you are a religious cheater shut your ass up <laughs> and stop lying but nonetheless uh marcel was he was like damn tiffany like for real she's like well yeah i mean you know and also with uh trey like if you know she met mel and you know the kids like i believe in a blended family and everything and so he's like well, you know what tiffany you really are a good friend and so now tiffany started to get pissed off because marceau is being hella passive aggressive and sarcastic right now so she's like i'm feeling mad that marceau is here and you know why did martel bring this conversation up with you know somebody and he ain't got nothing to do with it okay but then she starts um talking about how you know she's like well, I mean, at the end of the day, like, this is something I have to think about. Like, this is looming over her head, you know, basically, you know, this entity of, like, being with Martell. Like, when you hear the name Martell Holt, you're immediately going to think cheater. Like, so how is it to deal with that? Then it was, uh, what else did she ask? Um, he's like, oh, yeah, and you talked about, oh, um, uh, Melody and, you know, the family. He was like, so... She was like, you know, because I've done that before, you know, me and baby daddy, we really, you know, had to figure it out. And I just, there were so many things I wish I could fix. And, you know, I'm, I'm glad we figured it out. And so Mar Marceau with his sarcastic, oh, so you're an expert now because you think you got it right. And she's like, I didn't say that. Like, you know, Marceau does shit like that. We're just like throwing words in there that you're, you know what you're doing. And so it's like, ain't nobody say I was an expert, but like, God dang. You know, you know, for Mel and Sheree to be in community, he's like, well, first of all, me and me and Melly ain't even community with each other. So it definitely can't happen with Sheree. Like, Tiffany, little do you know right now, he can't be in community because he trying to take his kids from his ex-wife, like full custody. Um, and so she's like, well, yeah, you know, uh, being in a, of a blended family, you know, I see, I know the benefits of it and everything. And so, um... Uh, she was like, I'm just saying, you know, the blended family, you know, that's just something that I, I feel like is beneficial. And so Marcel was just like, gas. Like when he said, oh, and did you really say, oh, did you, because you put the, uh, the punani down that good, you know, that like it's better than Mel. Like I was chasing Mel around the party. And Marcel said, gas, <laughs> gas. Yeah. She asked, she was like, you know, I want to know. He was like, well, what were you going to do with the information anyway? Well, she was like, well, the information was for me. Like. I'm asking, I just want to know. And so, nigga, don't worry about it. I want to ask the questions right here. And so now, Marceau and Martel was just like, Marcel was like, I can't even be talking to somebody's wife like this. And so Martel's like, well, I'm going to go, you know, go tell, talk to Louis. She's like, what? So he can fix his wife? And Martel was like, no. And Marcel was like, yes, absolutely. Of course, Marcel would say like that. And so we're going to see next week um, when, um, you know, she tell Big Louis about the conversation i personally don't like that it was the both of them and marceau was there i think it was strategic on martel's part to do that um i don't have a problem with men and women having discussions with each other um but obviously it can get sticky because you know obviously the situation is like is the woman's you know safety in 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 harm or whatever but i'm not one of those people who feel like men and women can't confront each other uh but when it's like a kind of like it was like almost like a gang up a little bit like i don't like that that's that's not right um next week we also see kimmy and you know maurice and once again him with the bullshit um and it's just like i'm just so exhausted with maurice i really really am i really 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 am um and i hate to see it i hate to see it but yeah 
Uh, next week's definitely going to be interesting, you guys. What do you guys think about this episode? What do you guys feel about Maurice? Is he doing fake daddy day camp, boot camp? Um, do y'all believe it? Um, do you guys feel like Kimmy need... What is, what is Kimmy to do at this point? Um, how do you guys feel about Tisha and Kiki, you know, being, you know, cousins back at it, back in the saddle, back filming Louise style, okay? And I appreciate y'all for tuning in. Make sure to follow my Instagram and Twitter, and I will catch y'all on the next one. Bye.